Welcome to our first Cougar Country podcast. My name is John Scholl, and I am superintendent of Chino Valley Schools. And with me is Brian Parada. I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, Brian Parada. I'm assistant principal and a career and technical education director at Chino Valley High School. Again, I want to mention this is our first episode of Cougar Country Podcast. And just a little bit about Chino Valley Schools. We are 104 years old, believe it or not, out in Chino Valley. And we have four schools. We have Territorial Elementary School or ter- Territorial Early Childhood Center, sorry. Um, that is grades pre-K to two. We have Del Rio School, which is grades three through five. Heritage Middle School, grades six through eight. And Chino Valley High School, which is where Brian works, grades nine through 12. So I'm going to start a little bit with Brian. Um, Brian, you're the, the Career and Technical Education Director. Just in broad terms, what is CTE, your Career and Technical Education? Yeah, yeah. So like you said, very well known as a CTE, most commonly referred to. Um, CTE gets our students exposed to different careers and trades, uh, whether it's in manufacturing or agriculture, or hospitality, or the medical field, uh, provides the students with hands-on learning opportunities, along with a, um, an educational standpoint that takes place in the classroom. Um, and you put these together for two years or three year or even four year tracks, and uh, students walk away with a great base of knowledge to enter into a career field associated to their program of study. Um, and in most cases, students walk away with uh, certification specific to the industry, um, or they're earning college credits or even uh, college certificates. Now, is when people talk to me and, and talk to me about the school district and particularly Chino Valley High School, one of the things I tell them is the two most strategic partners that we have for Chino Valley High School are Yapai College and Mountain Institute CTED. <laughs> that name is new within the past couple of years. Um, how do those two... Um, partners really um, work with Chino Valley High School. Yeah, so we'll talk uh, specifically again about CTE. Um, so Mountain Institute CTED, um, they're basically the uh, they're a career and technical education district in itself, and their sole purpose of creation that the state created um, over a decade ago is to create vocational training opportunities for students at the high school level, um, where they are providing educational opportunities. And in this case, we partner with Yavapai College, who provides many, many, many wonderful resources with them uh, for our students. And we get to use their facilities right there on Ruger Road um, and have an opportunity for students to go there daily. Um, And they provide the teachers. They provide the college education credits. And it is Mountain Institute's uh, position to help coordinate the opportunity for students, along with paying for all the college tuition credits that would be required. Otherwise, um, so really they are there to provide the uh, educational opportunity and make this a free endeavor for our kids in Yavapai County and um, can't iterate enough how many, um, how much of a benefit that is right there. Because kids will walk away for some programs with up to uh, 15, 18 college credits. Um, and that's that's quite a bit as itself. And I know that, you know, that's just part of it because you have by college we actually have classes on our high school campus uh, dual enrollment classes where kids are enrolled at both the high school and at Yavapai college earning college credit for classes that they're taking on our campus and over three quarters of our students that graduated last year had at least um, one college credit and um, there were some that were close to their aa degree right. um, enough to get their aa based on either their their CTE credits along with their dual enrollment cr- credits. I know there's a lot of kids that are go- going off to college or, sec- or secondary, uh, post-secondary school and not having to take their math and English because they've done their math and English for their college classes at Chino Valley High School. So yeah, that's exciting. It is. Um, what, other, what other opportunities do, um, does the CTED provide that maybe if it wasn't there that we wouldn't be able to, to um, provide? Yeah, I, I think... Beyond the college credits themselves, uh, another big piece um, that we hear from employers and from different uh, industry partners is um, certifications. So students will take these classes. They have, they have to pass the certification exam. Um, so they provide that opportunity right there for them to get additional industry certifications. Um, so again, instead of students having to go pay for these items, CTED is paying for that with them right. uh, through their programming. One of the things I like about Chino Valley High School also is that we have a 52-acre farm, 
kitty corner from the high school right. or the district office right on Center Street and Highway 89 uh, called the Cooper Ag Center. And the Cooper family left that to the district over 20 years ago. And we have right now we're, um, you know, our, our corn at, the, at this airing where our corn has been harvested. Um, we have some field grass that we're harvesting into round bales that we, we actually sell to uh, the community. And they can come in and buy our, our bales of, of hay and, and uh, field grass. And it's just a learning lab for our kids in our agricult- agriculture um, program to really learn what it means to be in agriculture as a um, business. Right. And um, we have we have two teachers that, that do that. We have a full time staff member, almost full time staff member, that helps run that that farm. And it's it's exciting stuff. Um, you don't see that everywhere. There's only a, I think a couple farms in Arizona that are school owned, and it's an opportunity that that very few kids um, have in um, Arizona. So it's a it's a way to keep that that farming culture and farming tr- uh, tradition and heritage alive and well in Chino Valley. Um, what what else is going on at the high school that, that that you want to share? So at the high school these days, uh, you know, school's just kicking off again for us. Um, one of the things academically to speak of, John, um, is we've got kids, as we mentioned before, who take dual enrollment credits at the high school, uh, whether they're math classes, English classes, um, and we also have what's called the Honors Academy, and students have to take a certain amount of honors credits as they progress into their 11th grade and 12th grade years. Um, they are going to be pushed basically into some Yavapai college classes. Um, so kids are getting a mix of college credits, some honors courses right there. Um, and so really overall, it really, really does prepare them for college and prepare them for the career, the next level that we're working towards. Um, and so when you put all this together, when we have this many career and technical education courses available, along with strong culture of kids enrolled in our honors academy classes and um, the dual enrollment credits that kids take advantage of. Um, it comes out with students applying for scholarships. And for our school, it, it's, a, it's a moment of pride when we go through our award ceremony, right? And you have kids walking on stage and collecting scholarship opportunity after scholarship opportunity. Um, everything totaling over you know $2 million in opportunities for our students right there. Um, and th- that's a really big deal. Um, you know, we, we think about small Chino Valley, mm-hmm. nestled, uh, you know, north of Prescott. And, um, you know, some people may think there's not much to offer there. And I mean, but you get on campus and you see as everything unveils and opens to, uh, to our community, it's quite, quite great. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of switching gears a little bit, a Territorial Early Childhood Center. Um, several years back, my, my predecessor, superintendent, um, we were going through some changes in the district, and we used to have two K-5 schools, Del Rio and Territorial School. And it worked out where we were able to do some changes, and now we have Territorial Early Childhood Center, which is really the focus on those kids that are, we go all the way down to three years old, all the way up to second grade, which is about eight, eight or so. And we have, um, it's the focus is on the, that, that reading and writing, getting those kids that early childhood education, and it's neat because all of our early childhood educators are together. It used to be split apart on two different campuses, and now they're together. They can they can collaborate. They work together, and it's become very popular amongst the community and a, a great place for our kids to start. And it's one of my favorite places to go in the morning. And and um, you know it's 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 interesting. the The first day of of school, I was there, and you get the 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 parents that are almost as as um, upset about having to send their kid off to school as the kid having to go <laughs> go um, through the gate. and uh, But then by the end of the year, the, the, the kids can't wait to get to the classrooms. And, and so it's a great place for our kids to start out their educational career. And it's, it's um, some, some fantastic teachers there, some fantastic uh, paraprofessionals and, and other classified staff. Um, Brandy Cox is our principal there and does a fantastic job. And so, you know, it, it's um, again, one of my favorite places to visit because you get just the little little kiddos and uh, and excited about school and and um, then then they go off to Del Rio School and, and different opportunities. Um, you know, we start branching out a little bit. Our our fifth grade is it's Del Rio's third, fourth, and fifth. In our fifth grade, we actually have a kind of a pre middle school model where we have groups of kids that have two teachers instead of just one, kind of getting them ready for that 
going from class to class, and we have a, um, our fifth grade is broken up into math and science teacher and a language arts and social studies teacher. But they also start getting into those um, after school activities. We have ukulele, we have archery, and um, some other other activities. And then they go off to middle school. And middle school is a, a interesting place in and of itself. I was a middle school assistant principal for a little while at Heritage Middle School. And you get those kids that are going through uh, puberty and other changes and trying to help them manage that and educate them at the same time. And it's a lot of work. <laughs> and um, now I know you you started out at Territorial School. Oh, Her Heritage. Heritage. Okay. Yes. Yep. At the middle school. Okay. There. Yep. So my first experience was teaching uh, physical education at uh, Heritage Middle School. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I coached every season under the sun right there, <laughs> as most PE teachers uh, PE teachers did. Okay. So, uh, I was loved the experience. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. And then um, you know we have we have programs that help the kids transition between each school, which is exciting. And um, yeah, it's lots of lots of neat things going on in our district. So this year, we actually started off with a significantly higher enrollment than we have in the past. And what's what's kind of interesting is seems to be mostly at Chino Valley High School. Mm. You know, we are over... Uh, we typically, could feel it. <laughs> typically in the past, we've been about 775 kids last year, I think, give or take. And we're up well over 800 this year. And and we don't know why. We're not we're not going to question it. We're going to take it as it is and, and move forward. And we have the, the capacity to to address it, but you, you say you can feel it. How do you feel that? You know, one of the things that, you know, I, I'm in the hallways a lot. I, I love being with the kids and I always try to be very, very uh, visible for the students, but just walking through the hallways alone, um, there's certain corridors where it just becomes much, much <laughs> tighter right there. Um, and I know less kids, you know, I pride myself on being able to get to know the kids and learn their names. And right now I'm struggling. Uh -huh. uh, I feel like I'm swimming in a, pool of students I don't know or maybe faces I forgot because we're getting mixed up. Yeah. Um, but with that comes a lot of good opportunities and just makes it much more meaningful to provide that many more opportunities. Right. I know there's been, we, I know there's um, higher participation in some of our, our after school activities. Um, yes. I know we had to add a, a boys basketball coach, which right. we, we um, had then lost and now their participation's back up, which is good. And and so it's it's nice to see some of that stuff going on. Um, what what kind of what are the what are the activities that are going on this this fall? Yeah, I know there's the big one always, which is football, right? Um, and then what's going on? What else is going on this? Right. This so fall? we've got football that's uh, been going on now for a couple months. Uh, so football up and running. Got cross country up and running, um, and we could talk about the track a little bit later too. Maybe <laughs> um, we've got girls volleyball occurring right now, and spirit line with uh, cheerleading going on. Um, and also robotics is kicking off again. So okay. I know that uh, the instructor there is excited because he's got higher numbers than he's had in the past as well. Right. I know we can't forget soccer. We have our <laughs> our, returning champ, our returning champ, girl yes. champions with a, a brand new coach. Um, our, our previous coach uh, moved on out of the area, and so we have a brand new coach. And then, of course, our, our boys soccer does has traditionally done really, really well, and we're excited about that. Um, you mentioned the track, and I... I I um I was one of the first track or was one of the first track coaches when the program started in 2000 and and we had a brand new track at that that time and and it the track has deteriorated pretty significantly mm -hmm. since then and and one of my goals was to build a new one or get a new one built and and the um, late August is it was done and we're excited about that and and we were talking how. Um, it just changes the atmosphere of the of the field having that brand new track there. It does. It does. You know, as you come on to campus, you always had a black, dreary track going around <laughs> a football field. Um, but as you're coming through there, whether you're driving by or you're on campus and you see it, it just kind of brightens up and liven, livens up the entire campus, yeah. uh, makes it much more exciting. And I'll tell you, um, this school year, we had um, our homecoming event much earlier on than we have in the past. Um, so when we had kids returning onto campus, we were on campus for um, three, maybe four weeks before we had homecoming in our first mm -hmm. spirit weeks. So we had pep assemblies going on within the first month, um, athletics occurring. Um, so it was a great, lively first month of, of positivity and excitement for all the kids. Yeah. Usually that doesn't take place until fall break, usually right before fall break, That's which right. is the beginning of October. So it's a nice, nice start to the school year. What are some of the other activities for homecoming that, that took place. Yeah, so great, great tradition there for Chino Valley High School with uh, what we've done over homecoming um, over the years. So um, so far this year we've had 
powder puff football, which is uh, the young ladies go out there and they play flag football. They get jerseys, they put on face paint, and they get out there and they get a little rough and rugged with each other. Uh, <laughs> a lot of fun to watch some of these kids who are maybe quiet and meek, but you don't know them on the athletic field and they put on the football gear and they really own it and uh -huh. uh, do a wonderful job. So powder puff was a lot of fun. Um, seniors won again. And um, year after year, it's always a question on was it officiated fairly or not? <laughs> so it was always a push to see if seniors are really going to win or not. So that was fun. Um, yeah, Top Gun also. Top Gun mm -hmm. is uh, another great tradition. It's uh, We don't have a boys volleyball team like uh, many teams do in the, in the state. So we play, we get boys together and we put together volleyball teams and they get in and they do a tournament for that as well. Um, that was always fun and had a bonfire again this year. Right. Um, they, you, they are, they're out there and they've got country music playing and they've got uh, maybe our Mexicana music playing or maybe they have some hip hop playing, but you got kids out there, they're dancing in the dust around the big bonfire and they do the traditional piece where they have the uh, opposing mascot kind of built out of paper mache, mm -hmm. toss it into the bonfire <laughs> ritualistically. And um, it's uh, it, was, it was a great, great homecoming, great start to the school year that yeah. way. Now I know uh, you had mentioned that uh, homecoming was much earlier this year. Yeah. And w one thing that was unique is it was right before Territorial Days, which is the big event that happens in Chino Valley. And so, um, and then in Territorial Days, they do this year fireworks and and uh, our cross country team does their 10K event and fun run. But um, also, it, one of the biggest things, the biggest attractions is the corn dinner. The corn dinner. Why don't you talk a little bit about the corn <laughs> dinner? Corn dinner, if you've not been to the corn dinner, you're missing out. And next year, you're going to have to catch it. Um, I believe this year was the 73rd annual corn dinner. Um, and it's been hosted over the years by different uh, civic organizations. And I think it's been the last maybe 20 or so years that Chino Valley High School has been the main um, host of those who put it on. Um, so we grow the corn locally, as the name suggests, corn dinner. Uh, we grow the corn on our on our farm. Um, our student workers who help plant the farm and our students go out and they help harvest the uh, corn itself. Um, so we've got thousands of ears of corn harvested. We take them to the corn dinner and it's basically kind of an all you can eat uh, corn dinner. And they do a deep pit, um, I think it's called deep pit barbecue with, um, uh, with beef. And so you come in and it's a, the huge auditorium and um, uh, at Del Rio Elementary School. And the community comes each year for at least the last three, four or five years. There's been more than a thousand attendees that come in. Uh, they, fill our, they fill Del Rio Elementary School up. Uh, and we have all of our FFA students who are there serving dinner, uh, collecting drinks, cleaning up after folks. Um, uh, just a great, great community tradition. And this is this is the fundraiser, main fundraiser for our FFA alumni group. And the That's funds right. <clears throat> that were collected go to scholarships for our FFA members. Um, some of them to pay for them, I believe, to go out to um, back east for the FFA convention, which is typically yes. in... Indianapolis this year? Uh, yeah, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. I know it's been in Kentucky also, but it's in Indiana, Indianapolis this year. And, yep. and I've been once, and it's a fantastic experience, and yep. I want to go again in the next couple of years. And then also um, uh, college scholarships to help our kids, our FFA members, go off to um, college and and promote that, that agriculture education for those kiddos. So um, it's a, a fantastic event, and this year was an election year, so lots of politicians – um, volunteering to serve yeah, corn. <laughs> there was. <laughs> so, um, now after our fall season, we have we go right into the end of October. We head into our winter season of athletics, and you're talking about, of course, all everything indoors for the most part. We have basketball, boys and girls basketball. We have wrestling, boys and girls boys and wrestling. Girls, that's right. We do have a girls wrestling team, and they they now have like a girls state wrestling. Uh, championship yep. and and so it's a a, a full standalone um, sport and we have a, a a great coach that that was teaching over at um, Del Rio School and is now on campus as That's a right. can, counselor Daryl and Rock and she's doing a fantastic job with those girls and and uh, carrying on that tradition of of great wrestlers uh, both boys and girls. Um, so that's exciting, and then of course we have spirit lines still going on. I yeah. think that's it for um, for Basketball. athletics in the in the in the winter. But um, that'd be correct. It's 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 a you know a lot of good tradition going on. 
Um, one of my one of my favorite events that I I work at is actually the Mile High Challenge, mm -hmm. which is the wrestling tournament that takes place um, usually around the beginning uh, around July f or January first. Yes, um, where um, our teams and it's typically all three um, wrestling teams in the area, um, Bradshaw Mountain, Prescott, and Chino Valley, host the a statewide actually it's a it's a multi-state tournament it is and they have hundreds of wrestlers come in and then they've had the junior high wrestlers have a tournament and we've actually last year they had embry riddle had a had a match there and it's just a, a, a neat thing going on and so you make sure you keep an eye out for that one of our other big traditions in the fall is our thanksgiving feast That's right <laughs> we um, invite all of our parents to come in the week before Thanksgiving at each of our schools is a different day. And they come in and have a, a full Thanksgiving meal, the, the carved turkey, the mashed potatoes, gravy, vegetables, roll, pie, all, all that. Um, they sit with their kids and eat. eat. And what's funny is I, I try to attend each one. And a lot of times I'll see a parent at all four <laughs> visiting their kids at each of the schools. And, and, um, it's also neat. I've been in this district. This is my 26th year in the district and I'll see kids coming in. Well, I'll, I call, call them kids. My ex students coming in to eat, eat uh, lunch with their kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, that, that's kind of neat. And it's, it's a, a great experience. It's a great way to get the parents into the schools on a, on a positive yes. note. And I, I've always, the, the feedback that we get is it's a, it's a, a, a great experience for both the kid. Um, you know, a lot of times a kid gets to, to introduce their parent to the principal or the superintendent or whatever. It's a great experience there for the kid, for the parent to kind of see what's going on. We have a slew of volunteers that come in um, and it's such a, it's such a great, great experience. And um, so something that we've been doing for several years, um, yes. I, to be honest, I can't even remember how long it's been, but um, it's it's a fantastic experience. So you know, John, one of those things right there. You mentioned a chance to, for us to meet parents right there um, as an administrator and being the assistant principal who does a lot of discipline. You know, <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes my first times meeting with parents um, might be related to some discipline issues. So having an opportunity to come in and be completely neutral ground, a happy time of the year, and for them to come in and meet them on great terms. Um, Always love those days because it's just an opportunity to kind of shift gears and kind of reflect on where things have been and how we can just get to a better place. Mm -hmm. And um, so as administrators and teachers as well, having an opportunity to come in there and see the kids um, with their parents um, and around a joyous time of year and having a nice feast like that, it's um, it, it really brings a little extra element to the campus that wouldn't be there otherwise. Yeah, yeah. So. So some of the other projects that we're working on right now, we um, have in the past couple of years, we've done um, adoptions for math and mainly math and uh, textbook adoptions. And this year we're working on social studies K-8 along with science K-8. And we're excited about that. Um, and, and one of the reasons we're excited is one of the vendors that we're looking at um, already integrates or is, is our math is the same vendor that provides our, our math curriculum. And it's one platform and um, a kid logs in one place and they have access to their math curriculum, have access to their science curriculum, have access to their social studies curriculum. Um, they can actually get online on their phone, download the material onto their phone or onto their other, other device and do it at home, come back, get online <laughs> and it uploads all the completed work right onto the, to the portal. So, you know, it, it's, you know, I, I think about when I was a teacher um, with overheads and, and mimeographs. <laughs> it's just a, it's a different world in the classroom. And it's exciting to see how we're kind of engaging kids right. with this um, increased technology. And, um, and I don't know if, if it, you know, some of the neat stuff going on at the high school with that. Yeah, so at the high school, we have um, we use Google Classroom quite a bit right there. So there, unfortunately, the kids have to uh, have internet access to be able to get onto Google Classroom. So I think with the middle school and the elementary school coming on, that's another opportunity for them to really complete work at home when I see it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and for the kids to have that opportunity to complete their online homework at home, maybe it's on a device, maybe they don't have internet, but they can download it and still get it done right, right. there. Um, so that is a, a great reach and a great step right there uh, in the use of technology for the right. district and for the kids. I know also at, at Chino Valley High School, we have a Yavapai College class. It's not even a Chino Valley High School class. It's a Yavapai College class. Now, it used to be called 
Computer network technology. Mm. Is that still, is it CNT or has it changed its name? On the technical side, it is a CNT. Uh, <laughs> but uh, on the more attractive side of it, it's cybersecurity. Right. So, um, you know, we have the kids who are working through cybersecurity classes. And that, as John had said, is a Yellow Park College class. Um, there is some hands-on work. So you're working a little bit with hardware and some of the components, uh, some disassembling and rebuilding. Um, but really, they, they start to focus a lot more on the cybersecurity side of things right there. And um, that's where the interest level um, that we're seeing is really starting to take off, is mm -hmm. that kids are recognizing that this is a huge field of growth right there that's coming about. Um, and so we have a college partnering with them, provides us with the instructor, um, and kids have access to high-powered computers in those in those classrooms that are modern and up-to-date, large monitors, and um, uh, really getting some really great exposure. Right. Now, that's in just in that one class and in our other classes. And this is pretty much the case um, K-12. We have almost enough devices. Um, we use Chromebooks. Right. Um, we are a Google um, uh, district. And so all of our emails and, and Google Classroom, everything's associated with Googles. We use Chromebooks and there's enough Chromebooks to go around where almost enough for every student on a one-to-one -one basis. And and so we really are pushing that. And we're even to the point where we receive some, some what's called E-rate funds to purchase some devices that we can actually loan to kids. I don't want to say give to kids. Right. <laughs> it's loaning to kids. It's still district property, but they take it home keep it home and can use that device. Maybe they don't have one at home that they can use. In addition, we have um, Wi-Fi devices that we can give them and they can utilize that if they don't have the internet at home. So um, it's, it's you know, we're providing as many resources as we can right. to keep these kids um, in, engaged and get give them an education K-12 that is relevant to them um, to their to their needs and to their you know um, stuff that interests them and it's going to give them skills that they're going to be able to use once they get out of school. Right, you know, and one of the things I think John that the district does really well at is providing the resources for these students so they're having the same opportunity that other students will have that are not in a rural area as we are in Chino Valley. So um, you know, broadband Wi-Fi is much more available in some of our bigger metropolitan areas. Um, where in Chino Valley, that's not the case, but. Uh, these little steps that we're taking really helping to bridge the gap for those students. So right. It's a great deal. So some of the other things that are going on in the district that um, are not necessarily related to curriculum, but but I think help, <laughs> um, especially in those summer months, we have a project that we've been working on for several months, I'm sorry, several years, and that's putting um, air conditioning in our classrooms. Mm -hmm. Right now we <laughs> are, um, a majority of our classrooms, maybe three quarters of them are uh, cooled with swamp coolers. And as everyone knows, um, you know, this past summer wasn't that bad. It was actually fairly cool. And, but there has been some summers where it's a hundred degrees and 70% humidity right. and swamp coolers don't work, especially when you got three little radiators sitting in a classroom, um, <laughs> it, it gets hot. And so the state of Arizona is helping us, um, with this project, um, along with putting a sealer on our roof, so our roof stopped leaking. But we're talking about a $20 million project across the district to put air conditioners in our classroom. Very exciting. Um, I know air conditioning doesn't seem that exciting, but when you've been in the classroom <laughs> and it's and it's as hot as it is, um, it is exciting for our, our kiddos and, and, and staff. And it just makes it that much more um, easier to learn when you're not worried about um, being uncomfortable, and that's really what it's all about and the reason for doing this. Um, some of the other projects that we have, I, I mentioned that we had finished the, the um, track at, in August. That was a big deal for us. We also are one of the, you know, and, and this is a, a countrywide, a nationwide problem, not just in Arizona or not just in Chino Valley, is finding teachers. And so one of the um, advantages that we have is that we are on a four-day school week. So we go to school Monday through Thursday, a little longer each day to make up, make sure we have the same hours. But um, that's actually an, um, uh, attracts a lot of teachers who um, want that extra time. They're willing to work hard for four days, and then they have those three days off. And a lot of times, the life of a teacher is you end up working one day during the weekend, so they can work right, one day do. and still have two days off. That's, that's for what a lot of our staff end up doing. And so um, that's an attractive um, uh, part to, to working in Chino Valley. But one of the other things we're looking at um, is teacher housing. And in Chino Valley, as it is um, all over the area, it's difficult to find uh, affordable rentals. And um, a lot of times we're hiring um, single people just out of college. 
and they're making the the you know um, low the lowest wage that a teacher can make, and they're trying to live on their own and and everything else. And so by having some kind of teacher housing available, um, it would give them a transition. It's not meant to be for them to live there for 20 years. It's meant to give them you know time to get on their feet and um, get financially stable and get to a point where they can go out on their own. So that's something that we are significant are looking at to do behind. Del Rio School. Um, we have the district owns some property back there and uh, probably about 10 acres and there's three acres that we've identified that are flat and and we'd be able to easily put on some some ho- housing. So that would be a, another big project for us. And and it's, you know, we've in the, the past several years um, prior to probably two, three years ago, um, the district was was significantly hindered because of financial issues. It's gotten better. It's not it has a long way to go. Um, we're trying to pay our teachers and and get get as much money into their pockets as possible. But we've been able to do some things that we haven't been able to do in the past, and so um, that's that's nice to see that we're able to help our teachers and our students and other staff members and and really um, you know move forward into the twenty first century. <laughs> and um, you know, technology wise, we've been we've been very lucky there, um, and it and so. Um, we've invested where we where we needed to, and that's really worked out. As one of the things that we've experienced uh, with us in our own industries, um, and as we experience as being consumers of products here in the country, especially in Arizona, um, it just always we always hear that there is a shortage of workers to complete jobs to fill positions at restaurants, fill positions, and um, maybe some construction yards. And whatnot. Um, Want to let everybody know that at Chino Valley High School, we're going to have a link available for our students. Um, it's actually available now at this time for student employment links specifically. So, uh, looking for as much information as we can. And when you're looking to hire some high school students who have some technical skills, whether it's a little bit in the medical field, or maybe some construction fields, maybe some manufacturing areas. Um, but we've got students ready to come work and they've got knowledge skills. They've got some hands-on technical skills. Um, and we want to put this right in front of them and help start their careers off in a place where, uh, it's meaningful to them and a great springboard for their, for their futures, whether they're going to stay in the vocational field and work right out of high school, or if they're going to get into college and go, um, you know, explore those further by going to post-secondary education opportunity. But, we want more exposure for our students, more opportunities for our students um, in the career work field. So anything we can get to um, for some employment links, please, by all means, reach out to us at Chino Valley High School um, and, and give us that information. We'll post your your job openings on our school website for the students. Um, students will be able to access it at ChinoValleySchools.com. And looking forward to this next step and next phase for uh, career training for our students. Brian had talked about joining us or finding out more information at our website, chinovalleyschools.com. I also want to encourage you to go to our Facebook page. A lot of stuff going on and updates. You can search on Facebook for Chino Valley Schools Arizona. Make sure you get that Arizona in there so you get the right Chino Valley Schools. And I want to thank you for joining us for our first podcast, a Cougar Country podcast. And until next time, thank you for joining us. (laughs) 